regardless of the consequences. Since 1952, Jehovah's Witnesses have adhered to the Bible teaching that those who practice conduct condemned by God should be disfellowshipped. Then in 1973, although many considered the use of tobacco to be a personal choice, Jehovah's Witnesses rejected it outright as a form of drug abuse. They were willing to uphold these scriptural standards even if it didn't win them any popularity. Sure, you could relax the standard and you could perhaps attract a lot more people. But Jehovah's never been primarily interested in numbers, but he's interested in quality of his worshipers. Only eight survived the flood. Shows you Jehovah's thinking on, on numbers. We will stick with the scriptures. We'll never water it down. A little leaven ferments the whole lump. This is clean. And when people come to the kingdom hall, uh, we want them to feel confident that this is clean. Not just physically, but most importantly, spiritually clean. For years, organizational matters were largely in the hands of the president of the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Pennsylvania. But in the 1970s, a concerted effort was made to align the organization more closely with the pattern in the Bible. And so if there was no number one in the first century among the apostles, uh, there, why should there be a number one today? But the, the pattern of the first century is a collective uh, direction of the organization. This collective direction is given by a group of men who serve as the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses. There's a wisdom in a multitude of counselors. When we all see it in agreement, we're very uh, convinced this is the direction Jehovah wants us to go. That, you can't do that if you're alone. This adjustment has enabled Jehovah's Witnesses to do their work more effectively. They are building houses of worship faster than ever before. They are publishing Bible literature in more than 500 languages. In either printed or electronic form. Jehovah's Witnesses are convinced that this system of things is deep into its last days. And the governing body is intent on reaching as many people as possible with the knowledge of God. We want to continue to oversee and give impetus to the preaching work because this has to be done before the end comes. Mark 13, 10, in all the nations, the good news has to be preached first. We just need all the help that uh, you can possibly muster up to get out there and preach and teach the good news of the kingdom and have that urgency about it because it is so urgent. Jesus said that we can have more confidence in the fulfillment of the Bible than the sun coming up. And so with that kind of faith, we can do the work that's involved. We just pour ourselves into that. It would be impossible for humans to do what Jehovah accomplished. We have to give him full credit for the things that have transpired. And we also realize that we've got a work to complete. So keeping our brothers and sisters focused on what Jehovah wants us to do at this particular time, seeing how close the end is, that is our main focus, and giving full support to the brotherhood as they continue to show their love for Jehovah to preach that good news in all the inhabited earth. What I see in the modern history of Jehovah's Witnesses, here is a people who were hungry for the truth, who were humble and who wanted to do Jehovah's will. They have deep love for God and a desire to see Jehovah's name uh, sanctified to the ends of the earth. 
What started as a small group of sincere Bible students has grown into millions of preachers throughout the earth. The Bible foretells the future. What began with little international or ethnic diversity has grown into a worldwide brotherhood. United in the worship of the one true God, Jehovah. Bible education is still the means by which they receive the light. They understand that what they learn from the Bible today will strengthen their faith for the days ahead. Those who accept the light become disciples. As true disciples, Jehovah's Witnesses have had to accept hardship. But no hardship can diminish their joy. Their perseverance through all manner of tribulations is evidence that their faith is not misplaced and that the God they worship is real. Thus, with living faith and joyful hearts, Jehovah's Witnesses will continue to let the light shine.